Hey everyone, welcome to another Cory B MTG standard video. Today we're going to be going back to Gruel here like we did for our first video, but a much different take on Gruel. This is actually the deck that I would submit for a competitive tournament if I had to submit right now, as this is the one that I took ninth in a challenge with. It was a bit of a different list. This was kind of pre-foundations, or at least I didn't put the foundation cards in there. <clears throat> I may have played Shock instead of Burst Lightning. No big deal, no big deal, just a functional downgrade. But anyways, I really think this deck is extremely strong. I've been tuning it over the last few days. It's something I'm gonna play in like the standard metagame challenge, as well as the standard moxes uh, that are gonna be online here in the next couple of days. So uh, yeah, this is kind of my pick so far, uh, but once again, very early in my standard exploration. So, you know, we still have a ton of work to go. But before I start talking about the deck, everyone, if you like these kind of standard videos and uh, you're looking forward to the next one, I would really appreciate you to hit that subscribe button below. Make sure to share the video, all that kind of stuff really helps out the channel. So let's dive in. First, we got uh, Burst Lightning as our new card. You know, this is the only foundation card in the deck. Uh, as I, I think we will be starting to come down to earth here on this YouTube channel where we'll recognize, of course, some of the foundation cards are going to be cool. But I wouldn't think that they're all going to be huge home runs when it comes to standard right away. It's going to be a couple functional upgrades, that kind of thing. As, uh, well, standard's already pretty strong and uh, there's only so much a new set does. But happy to be wrong about that and we can address that later. But Burst Lightning is the one new card. It's just shock, except it's a lot better as you have that extra mode of paying 5 mana to deal 4 damage. Outside of this, this does have the mouse shell of Manifold Mouse. Ember Heart Challenger, as well as the the Heartfire Hero, with a couple of Might the Meeks as our Mice strength, uh, Synergies. Now, I'm also playing, um, of course, other creatures like Monastery Swift Spear and Screaming Nemesis. This is a big one. Screaming Nemesis is a card that is not that great up against other black base removals. So, you know, Anoint the Affliction, Go for the Throat, that kind of stuff. It's not amazing. It still pretty much must be dealt with. But up against other decks that are looking to attack and block, this card's a nightmare. Anybody who would remember Boros Reckoner back in the days of Standard, if you're old like me, you would just remember that attacking into that card is pretty much futile and it's it's not going to work very well. It also has a really nice synergy where if you can ever bushwhack a card that's already just fine at either getting a basic land, counting for prowess, but if you can ever fight something where you get to, let's say, fight a 2-2, you get to destroy them, the two damage gets dealt, you get to deal two more damage to another creature, that kind of combination ends up being just really, really strong. The one piece of tech I would say in my list is the Innkeeper's Talent. I think this card just has been incredible for me. It just, gaining value turn after turn has been so very strong. I like playing this card when my opponent has removal mana up and it's pretty clear that they, they have um, some removal spell for let's say an Ember Heart Challenger. Instead, I'm just like Innkeeper Talent, go. And now the next turn, you know, they're fair forced with the decision of like, do I play a creature and be proactive or do I hold up another removal spell and then we get to adjust accordingly. So really good aggressive beatdown deck. I think Gruul is going to be one of the tier one strategies here for this entire standard season for sure. Um, so it's something we're going to have to get used to. And I think it's just a really strong deck. Then in the sideboard, of course, we have a bunch of removal, different card advantage cards like Questing Druid, Patchwork Formation to deal with Flyers, Pick Your Poison to deal with Flyers as well, um, and then, yeah, the big removal spells for, like, Scorching Shot for big creatures like Shieldred, and then Torch the Tower to be able to exile some threats. So before we get into the game, everyone, of course, we do got to shout out the sponsors here. The first one is, of course, KMC. Uh, they really make incredible sleeves. They have the Hyper Phoenix as well as the Hyper Mats are the sleeves that I love the most. And then this is their newest project uh, and their newest product out. It is the Mox Luxury Box. It's in a bunch of different colors. It's extremely high quality. I'm a huge fan of this really, really cool uh, deck box here. Use promo code CoreyB to save yourself 15% off and you can find the link below to get to their website. 
Our other sponsor, of course, is Heavy Play. If you are interested in any Heavy Play products, Heavy Play, of course, has some amazing stuff here. The RFG deck boxes, the ETB play mats, which I absolutely love. Everything's magnetic and everything kind of works together. They also have their newest product, which is the ETB play mat, where Phil Stone is doing artwork on them. If you haven't seen it, go over to heavyplay.com, use promo code Corey B, and check out some of this really, really nice project. Really, really nice product. So, all right, let's game. All right, first match with this really nice Gruel deck. Let's see what we got. Oh, well, it's not a good start. As, uh, yeah, just one land, only one creature. So if the Monastery Swift Spear dies, we are just dead. Has to be a mulligan here. This one's fine. Yep, this one's perfectly reasonable. Um, let's get rid of the village. Since we have the talent, since we have the talent, the will, the commitment. Now, since we have the innkeeper's talent, we can target the Emberheart Challenger over and over anyways. So, all right. This is a pretty good start. We're going to kill this up against maybe Boros Burn. This deck's been pretty popular. And now I think I'm just going to start with the talent because it's our only creature. We need to protect it at all costs. So if they just tap out to like plot a slick shot, then we kind of have to go for it and try to hit a land off this to then protect it. It's either that or we go uh, Swift Spear and we start going to town there. But nah, with this uh, about to come off, we got to make this quick. So land? Oh, come on. All right. Well, let's hope that doesn't die. As this is kind of the bet. Oh, yes. That's all you got. And they're just setting up for a big turn. I mean, still, we might die. Don't get me wrong. But, um, so we could start by drawing a card. We could start by just going here. We could go Swift Spear into Mouse. We want to try to line up a way to maybe kill them next turn. I don't know if it's going to be possible, but... I don't think we'll die next turn, even if they go double slick shot, double bolt, put us to 14. Each of those are five. That puts us to four, so we would be dead to triple bolt next turn. But if we get this to four, da four toughness, it can't really die. So maybe we do just kind of go to town here. Yeah, we're going to go to town. Okay, Ooh, still no land for us. We are gonna pump this to get it out of range. Let's hope we survive. If we survive, we get to kill both these show offs. But I'm afraid. I mean, we can probably just kill them if we survive. Gulp. Gulp. No blocks. That's no problem. I mean, maybe we can't kill them now, but we can kill both the slick shots, which is the same as killing them. All right. So let's first see if we can kill them. Um, this to the face. I mean, three spells. Three spells, fight, doesn't really matter, it's just prowess. Deal two, plus this, so that's three prowess triggers, that goes to four. This makes it to five, six, seven. It just has to be, right? I don't, I, oh, because I have double prowess. So plus six, they're already at five. This puts them to four, yeah, they're dead. All right, so. Uh, type creature you control, fights them. Okay, that doesn't matter. This to the dome. Now, do I have to show them snakeskin veil? I don't know if it matters. Nine, no I don't, okay. Easy game. All right, I mean, they got stuck on mana. If they didn't, we were probably dead, so. Now, on the draw, I wanna be as defensive as possible. I wanna bring in all my removal spells. I don't really care about this stuff. 
Um, and let's see what we want to take out. Innkeeper's Talent on the draw, I think, is not very good. I like Screaming Nemesis a decent amount if we can stop them from gaining life. And it's just a good blocker if we have to go to that route. Might of the Week is one of the worst cards in the deck anyways. And now one more cut. Hmm. I like having pretty much all my creatures against them. Sometimes Monstrous Rage as a pump spell is not amazing. Snakeskin Veil to protect my creatures is also sometimes medium. Um, I also don't want to overload on removal and then they just have a burn draw and they kill me that way because we have no life gain or anything like that. So, uh, Monstrous Rage is also just one of the best cards though, so that's kind of rough. I think I'm going to take out a Bushwhack. I think a Bushwhack is just okay as like, you know, fighting with Screaming Nemesis like I was talking about in the intro to like get a two for one isn't very a viable threat so on the draw you just really want to try to have as defensive of a draw as possible this is not that but i'm wondering if i'm still supposed to mulligan it i probably am four lands is also a lot too so i am gonna mulligan this i think it's close this i'm gonna actually keep it it looks pretty bad but uh, it is, even if we miss a couple land drops, we're going to kill a lot of creatures. So I'm going to keep. And uh, I think I'm going to just get rid of the Nemesis and try to just blow up all their creatures. All right. I will start with this if they're not going to play anything. And now we have the Manifold on the Heartfire next turn if we draw land. But they might just kill our hero. Our little mousy hero. Okay. No damage allowed. All right. So nice draw on our part. Now, I think I am going to kill their creature right now. And then we'll say go and, and try to kill whatever creature they draw. We'll wait on our threats. Okay. Okay. That is what I was afraid of, of course, but... Alright, so now... I can play one of my threats. And have a removal spell for this thing. What's the best one to play? Probably the one that isn't two creatures next turn. So let's just go with this. It's probably gonna die, but here we are. Okay, this is awesome. We get to go off. This is, this is looking familiar to game one. Go off in the sense that we get to do the thing here. I'm not going to try to get aggressive, though. I'm just going to target this and hide behind my removal. Double strike for sure. Now, we this, is, this doesn't represent double removal spells, which is awkward, but still hitting a land is not bad. So we can kill one of the show-offs. Now, if they just go double show off, double removal spell, you know, it doesn't feel great. Wow. Not even playing it yet. Okay, that leads me to believe they don't have another removal spell. Well, I'm going to take this opportunity to get my trigger. This is working out well. Um... So Swift Spear and once again, not playing any of these. I guess I could have just fired a removal spell if they have another two damage thing. So, all right, this is looking good. Now our Burst Lightnings are online for the four damage. Here they come. Bird Wizards. No blocks. I will try to kill this. If they have another Monstrous Rage, it maybe does something. Okay, so now I got to do math to see if I just win the game. So let's first see if I die. 
So this will be a monstrous rage, um, which will get this to three powers. That'll be six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten damage on this, and then this one is three, fifteen. I believe that's fifteen, but what if I just burst lightning for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? No, that doesn't do it, but it does do it if I double. Oh, the math, the math, the math. Three, that puts it to six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I'm counting fifteen, and that's not lethal. And then I have lethal on the crackback. I think I let this resolve. 8, 13, 14, 15. Yep, all right. Take 15. Okay, now I go like this. I can start by villaging. Okay, now I go like this. Double burst lightning. That represents... Six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, the burst lightnings alone are lethal with the prowess triggers they do. And this will do it. That math was confusing there for a second, but I don't think I would have had lethal if I uh, if I just went to kill it. So, all right. That's the first match, beating Boros Burn, which I think might be a little bit of a tough matchup. So let's play some more. Not the strongest hand on the draw, but I do think I'm going to keep this. Four lands is a little bit too many but we do have a decent amount of cards. All right, so it looks like this is the blue-white deck. I would think we have a good blue-white matchup, to be honest. All right, great draw. Excellent draw. Get on in there. Blue-white is the type of deck where I can kind of jam no matter what if I don't have a snakeskin veil. All right, that being said, a counter spell is a little bit more scary. So they could have counter spell. They could have Elspis Might. In the main, I kind of doubt that. I still need to play one of the creatures here, I think. But which one do I want to play? If they get soul partitioned, I don't really care in either aspect. Um, if they get bounced, I don't really care. But if they just have a picklock prankster here, I want to be trying to be as aggressive as possible. So I'm putting my best foot forward with the challenger. I challenge you. What you got? Dang. Okay. That is what I didn't want to see, but they probably had multiple options and would have done, you know, whatever best suits them. I don't feel great about any of this now, I must say. Didn't want to draw a land there. I could wait till next turn to offspring this. That just makes it more susceptible to uh, counter spells. But once again, they can pick lock prankster. If I don't do anything, so I'm just going to jam and be sad. And if they counter this, then I can probably rage. As what else am I doing, you know? Okay. I guess we rage now in case they have Elspeth Smite. Boom. Now I really wish we didn't have five lands, but we did keep a four lander, so can't be too mad about it. Pick lock moment. Okay, let's just hope they don't do the thing. Like recommission back a threat. That's the thing about this deck. It's extremely powerful when it does the thing, but when it doesn't, it looks quite bad. Gruel always is pretty streamlined, except sometimes it looks insane. All right, if we draw like basically anything, they're dead. And they still don't have the setup. 
Wow, we did not draw anything though. We were gonna put them to three and not even have lethal next turn. Okay, so pick your poison seems great. Shocks seem quite bad. And I think that would put burst lightning in that camp as well. I haven't played against this matchup a ton, but I wanna be able to deal with the big creatures and save mine. Get out of there. And I think I like all the questing druids. Maybe not. Maybe this is too, too slow. It's probably too slow. I like this against mid-range decks that have black removal spells, you know? Oculus is not really that. Screaming Nemesis also isn't amazing here. And in fact, it's quite bad. So what if I did this? As I wouldn't mind having something to do when they're holding up mana and I can just say go and then do the questing druid thing. I also don't love fight spells against them. So I'm on the draw. What if I take out the bushwax and just go with all the questing druids? Is that strange? I First and foremost, I got to have ways to deal with their creatures, their quadigens, their um, oculuses, mainly all of the oculus. So maybe obliterating bolt is actually not good as it doesn't deal with oculus. And we can play one bushwhack. I'm going to go with that. I don't know if this is correct. But a resolved Oculus is basically GG for me. So I have to first and foremost deal with that. I love that our pets are just hanging around here. Like this horse is like, oh, I'm not ready to graze yet. My bear's like, which way am I supposed to be looking? Where's my fish in a bucket? Oh, there it is. All right. Five lands is for sure too many. So we're mulliganing this one. Ugh, once again, a five lander. It would be a four lander, but still no threats. I'm gonna mulligan. Yeah, I guess I'll keep. We can get rid of the Carplusion Forest. And... Probably the mountain? I think I want the rest of my spells. All right, sad day. I actually don't think Questing Druid's that good. I'm just keep thinking, like, what if I Questing Druid into Pick Your Poison when they don't have a threat, you know? That that feels really bad, so. But on the draw, I do think we sideboard differently on the play. On the play, I'm just going to be like, I want to get you. I want to get you dead. So now I can do the trick with Questing Druid. Since they won't be able to counter it, I'm going to stop at my own end step. Oh, I'm not in my end step. Okay, so... All right, now I seek the beast. Okay, not the best, not the worst. Don't do it. Did they do it? They did. So, I mean, we have multiple answers. And we have a pretty bad threat, but I want to be able to use my mana here. The only way I can do that is if I go like this and I pick your poison. Then we lose our land, of course. I mean, Questing Druid looked okay there, and it wasn't even like our best hits by any mean. Okay. Um, I don't know what kind of sweepers they have. Wonder, do I Monstrous Rage before combat to play around Elspeth Smite? Does that even do that? Kind of, if I play this first. Yeah, I want to play around Elspeth's Smite. 
So I don't have to use snakeskin on that. I'm going to do it. So this puts it up to four toughness. And then we have the veil to back it up. Big hit. And we'll say go. Nothing? Love? Hate? Yeah, that was strong. Okay, I was like, dang, this is gonna be too easy. Not the case. Well. Dino land time. Hope for the best. I can't just do nothing. Gotta get lost or another pick lock. Yeah, that makes sense. And there is a smite, which is not good. Or there was a moment of truth. All right, but now they have officially filled their graveyard. And the Oculus is in the yard. They could have put it into their hand, so that's a bad sign. Now it's gonna be their turn for threats. The questing druid actually did seem okay though. Like if I drew another one now, I'd be ecstatic. We can only deal with one threat. Yeah, I hope they just go flyer, flyer, flyer. Well. I feel like they have a negate. We'll say go. Crazy they didn't put Oculus into hand, but I guess Quaddy Jin just hits harder. They might have the choice between that. Uh-oh, they're highlighting their graveyard. We all know what that means. Okay, that's not as bad as it could have been. Temporary lockdown is quite the card. I didn't think they would have that. But maybe I'm mistaken on that. Okay. That was an okay start. Get this going. I mean, I still think we're very, very dead here, but at least is a beginning. Okay, okay, all right. Now I think we have to play this. <coughs> I don't even know if I wanna attack with this one. It would trade with this, maybe that's fine. It would trade with it if it works, but. It's not a good attack. If they had an Elspeth Smite or something, I'm just dead. Yep. A lot of bad stuff happening for me here. But maybe we can deal with this and start piecing together something next turn. Is that what they picked? They didn't pick the Flood Maw? It's not great for me. Yeah. That's an 11 4. Maybe I'm supposed to block and pump here. No, I think I'm gonna try to go for the win. I mean, I, I don't think it's gonna happen outside of getting a uh, 
a monstrous rage and praying, but I think there's a small chance I can win the game next turn with some good hits off the challenger. All right, let's do it. I think it begins with this to see what we hit, which is not great. <laughs> Cast that again. All right, let's hit it here. Okay, now that's plus four, that's nine. And the patchwork makes 10, which is not the number we like. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They won't have lethal on the crackback, though, if I can kill this Hwadi Jin. So... That's what we're gonna do. This has to die. And if they have anything to stop this, it's over. Okay. It's crazy that we were even in this game. We were so far behind a second ago. I don't think it's worth it to actually cast this. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They don't have lethal. Play this and say go. Yeah. Bummer that we didn't have one more spell, otherwise I would have went for it. I feel like they wouldn't have said no blocks if they didn't have it though, you know, which would have been kind of silly. So they have 18 cards left on their deck. Oh, they got something underneath, huh? I'll block. Do I need to block? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If they have anything underneath, they would have already flipped it up. So no blocks. I'm at one. They might just have a lockdown. That will probably do it, but maybe not for sure. As I do still have this. Just play two of those and I might be able to do this. Okay, that's tapped. Sure. I think we needed something better. Now, is it worth it to play this and do the thing? I think so. So that's plus four, that's six. Yeah, we need more, so. And they're not gonna, they're gonna block this time. Oh my God. Double strike? <laughs> so anticlimactic that was an awesome game that was awesome okay i mean the fact that we were in that game is pretty wild pretty wild okay so now we're gonna change a lot of things as we're on the play 
Um, now I definitely want to be a little more aggressive. These seem great, actually, with them having lockdowns. I, I definitely want those. I still think maybe Questing Druid is going to come out. Maybe Bushwhack. Then again, Bushwhack on a Huati Jin combo, that deals them a ton of damage. Maybe that's just too cute. I also think Might of the Meek is too cute. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Talent might be too cute. Yeah, that falls to temporary lockdown quite badly. So, yeah. All right. I think this is a good configuration. Yeah. With them having lockdown, that free enchantment that they get, that card's good when they cannot deal with it. But now we're just going all in on aggression when we're on the play. That was a sweet game. All right. Let's play first. Yes. Okay. This is perfect. It's at least servable, you know? I'll keep. All right. Easy what we're starting with. Hero into challenger almost assuredly. If I top deck a mouse or something, I might not, but all right, they mold to six. Their horse is running. My bear is waving. In my element. There's some thought to like, you know, not going all in on some of these cards, but I am gonna start with this. And we won't put another creature that dies to lockdown in there, but we do have the answer to lockdown, actually. So, yeah, never mind. We might go ham on the lockdown. But if I draw a land, I'm screaming Nemesising for sure. If I don't, I'll probably village. All right. Let's go. It's easy as one, two, three. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Next turn, I can go Heartfire Hero from my hand and give it the old haste, though. Hmm. That seems like the play to me. Or just Challenger into that. I mean, just getting Elspeth smited here is not ideal. Maybe I just go double threat again and just say, yeah, if you have the thing, who cares? Because I have pick your poison. This getting interfered with is annoying, but phantom interference. But I bet they cut those when they're on the draw. Yeah, I'm going to go all in. Just creatures. I'm going to go into full control. Okay, no problem. They are setting up for a very good um, temporary lockdown on the surface value, but. Okay. I mean, maps are pretty good with this. Holy crap. Maps are really good with Valiant. Okay, they might have it now. Don't do the thing. No Oculus. Don't discard Oculus. The fact that they're... Okay, I don't mind the gin. Okay. So I don't think I want to run a counter spell into this. I'm going to start doing the things. Not a bad card to have. But I think we can actually do better. Mostly because we're going to do this one more time. Okay. Okay. 
I'm just gonna have them take this. All right, your turn. Okay. I'm glad we didn't blink first. It's an expensive hero. Now next turn, it's probably Nemesis and Rage. Unless they do the thing that we have to deal with. This has been a sweet match. Okay. Literally not... A oh, they're dead. Yeah, Nemesis plus Rage, six damage. Or we can do it way cooler. Should we do it way cooler? We can actually deal them eight this turn. Ah, oh, whatever. We just danced around them that game. That was nice. Maybe that's kind of the configuration we should have had. Honestly, the, it is. Like, with them having temporary lockdown, the innkeeper talent should have never been in my deck. Um, but I didn't know that that was stock on what they do. Maybe it's not. But regardless, we made a good pivot as uh, that card is really, really bad uh, up against temporary lockdown. So, all right, let's win the last one to get a 3-0. All right, third and final round. We are on the draw, unfortunately, but it looks like our opponent did take a mulligan. This hand's perfectly fine. We have two creatures. We have a snakeskin veil to back it up, as well as uh, just a solid curve. So definitely a keeper. All right. <clears throat> Get to even more curve out here. Almost assuredly still going to play our Ember Heart. Uh-oh, is this Mono White? Oh, no. Oh, no. This matchup is not good. This matchup is not good at all, y'all. I We ran into the bad one. This deck in general I don't think is very good, but it's very good against us. <laughs> so we'll try our best, but this is the anti-creature deck. Next to Golgari, this is even more anti-creature deck than Golgari. But, uh, you know, it just can't beat a lot of other decks. So, here's the question. How ham do we want to go on dealing with this card? I think I want to start by Snakeskin Veiling here. And see if we hit a land or something. We did not. We hit a Challenger. I'm worried if they have a Lockdown, but I don't feel like they play those in the main deck but they might i know they play sunfall so i'm going to attack i'm gonna play my land just in case i could kill him i don't think i could four put him to 14 six seven eight nine ten we have 10 damage 11 tech no just 10 so yeah i'm just gonna attack they're probably gonna chump block which is a little unfortunate so they take zero but I'd rather play this and then have three spells uh, to play. And then hopefully we can we can do enough damage where Screaming Nemesis can finish them off before Sunfall comes down. Okay. If they don't have a follow-up. Uh, all right. So. Now if we go Shock Double Strike. Um, that is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's not enough. So let's start with this. And now if we hit a land, maybe it's enough if we have that same play available. We did not. This is probably going to be a trap to play that heart fire in the face of a sunfall. So, let's see. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I think we have exaxes. So, we go like this. I think this is exactly 18. 10, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yep. We're the greatest. Hiya! <laughs> That's how you steal a game against your bad matchup. Heck yeah! Heck yeah! All right, now how do we do, how do we do it again? 
Torch the tower for the enduring creature is nice. Um, if they have lockdowns, having patchwork formations nice, but if they don't, it's quite bad. I don't know how much we're gonna wanna change. I think cards like Snakeskin Veil are actually bad. I think Bushwhack is bad. I think Talent is bad. Talent's just bad against lockdown. Shocks, I think, are worse than Torch. What do I want to be doing against them? Probably Questing Druid. And if I'm Questing Druid, I want to be able to slow down their draw. So I think I want this for their stupid card. They also have Biza. Biza's a beating. I don't know if I beat that card. Is this what I'm supposed to do? Just stay as low to the ground? And have a little bit of card advantage? It's definitely possible. There's some thought to wanting to keep Innkeeper's Talon, but I don't think so. I'm going to try to do this to just cheese them. You need to get under this deck, because if they ever get time to assemble Beezes and Sunfalls, you're dead. Or if they go Carrot Cake on two, Enduring Innocence on three, you don't have the Torch Tower, they sack it, gain three life, draw a card, you're in a lot of trouble. So I'm going to keep this. This is pretty bad that it's a tap land here, but uh, we might just play it turn one anyways. Otherwise, our hand is just perfectly functional. Yeah, it's more important to play a two drop here, so we're going to do that. Okay, so now the big question. Challenger or Manifold Mouse? They're probably both gonna die, but if they do go like uh, Enduring Innocence next turn, having a Challenger on the field I think is better. So let's go like this. Oh, they have Smites, that's right. Okay, I should have went that. Dang it, I, I completely spaced Smite, that was stupid. And now I don't have the answer for that. Really bad stuff. Well, I could just take this easy. Dang it. I really shouldn't have let them use their mana there. That was bad. All right, but I can go Swift Spear Go and then just Questing Druid. I think that's better. I wish I had a torch, but I do not. Mm. Okay, let's go like this. Find some torches. No, but not bad cards. So, I think we want to just play all our cards in exile here. Looks good to me. Mm, did I just screw the pooch again here? I might have, as they're probably about to sunfall. Yeah. Yeah, that was probably bad. <laughs> Alright, I don't think I played this game well. And the sun's about to fall. That's alright, we still got some pressure here. There they are, right on time. Alright, let's go with the nemesis. Now we can do the Nemesis trick and deal damage to it to prevent any life gain if they do play like a Biza or something. Okay. Well, that is good. It's not the worst thing ever. Uh, 
All right, I think end step. I'm gonna try to deal them two damage. So I can deal two here. Oh, I'm sure. Now, no more life can be gained. So now they can't really attack. I mean, they can if they want, but it's not like the biggest deal. All right, let's offspring this and say go. Now their Bane Slayer is just a five mana, five, five first striker, which is of course very good. This is the most annoying thing with this card. You just still have to do it, even though you're not gonna attack. I'll take it. Might be just Sunfall number two. Uh-huh. Okay. It's looking good. Not. Mm-hmm. Yep. Things are going well. Things are going well. It's a Biza. Okay, I get to draw a card. Yep. I think we're one draw step away from scooping them up. Mm-hmm. That's about how I expected this to go. <laughs> Not great. I don't know if I want to change anything, though. That looked pretty... I mean, they have enough sweepers that Snakes Can Veil I do think is bad. Um, and no real, I mean, I could bring in patchwork formation. We didn't see lockdown, but they probably do have it. Maybe they don't. Cause they do eat up their own carrot cake and stuff. Maybe they don't actually. I'm just going to leave it as is try to just beat them down. I'm already happy getting one game off them, so I'm counting this as a gentleman's 3-0 already for the video, but we'll see. All right, I'd love to play first. Give me a good hand. Oh yeah, this is a good hand. This is good. Now we gotta try to play around Elspeth Smite a little bit better, but that's also just what they want you to do, so I don't know. We're gonna play our spells and, and then evaluate from there. Bold strategy, I know. Crap. What's this? Oh, yeah, I forgot. They have those, too. Okay, well, now we can for sure attack with the challenger. All right, now it's time to try to draw a card. Damn. I don't think I'm winning this game if I don't attack. I really don't. Like, even if I get smited here, like, it's just... I think I have to be jamming and hope they don't have... Okay. Okay. Now, what do we do? Hmm. It's probably a turn where I shouldn't get too cute. But I want to rage. But I don't want to get blown out. Maybe this is supposed to be another manifold mouse turn? Maybe just a druid? Feels bad to do the druid play, but I do need to make land drops. Hmm. I'm gonna do the druid. Uh 
Unless maybe this gets killed, then maybe I'll play Manifold Mouse. Sure. Yeah, now I think we'll get our mouse going again. Hmm. Same play? Actually, I think I'm going to do this. I'm really worried about a Biza next turn, of course, but... Instead of one extra damage, I think I'm going to go like this. And like this, and target the Heartfire hero. And get in there with this. This plays around split up a little bit too. Okay. Well, let's hope they don't have Biza. Okay. They're definitely killing everything. Well, now we really have no choice. It's just questing Druid. Because we need a threat. No, not a Biza. Okay. Let's hit some goods. Okay. I mean, we know what we're doing this turn then. Pretty obvious. Okay. Not the absolute worst. They haven't had anything to push ahead, though. I mean, we're just given infinite time here. All right. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to rage main phase. Dying it. It's okay. Now we'll just do one of these. All right. Here we go. God, this deck's good at not having stuff die. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, we can kill it next turn, but for now, we just have to get Nemesis here. Ugh. And if they have split up, now we're just so dead because they get to attack. Oh no. Please, no split up. Okay. I mean, I think I just have to kill it. Yeah, let's do it. All right, with kicker. Have to let this resolve first. Now it's probably going to be a Sunfall. 
But they will take a good chunk of damage. Yep. I mean, their whole deck is life gain, creature removal, and life linking threats. We need a questing druid or something, or God forbid they don't have it. Of course they have it. Okay. I think I'd rather get the Valiant trigger on the other one. I suppose. Six, seven, it's not even lethal, so like we're really behind. Yeah, not looking good, my friends. This was a good match though. We fought as hard, we fought valiantly. All right. Here it comes. We're all in, we can't even beat the double block. Okay. Ah. Well, I am going to attack and go into full control. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, not like this. We've entered garbage time. We're going to need multiple questing druids in a row. I don't know if I was supposed to sideboard anything different. What do you think, chat? Was I did I was I in the wrong? All right. So, let's do this. Let's give it haste. Sick. Let's try a map. Set up our drop. Maybe I was supposed to map first. I was probably supposed to map first. I think as it stands now, I have to bin this. Yeah, I was supposed to map first. And I can't attack because they just block there. Now they just double. Now they just get to draw two cards a turn. I can sack the treasure. Yeah. Uh-huh. At least we've locked down the fort. Maybe. If they can't kill this and I get to draw two cards as well, not bad. Do I need them to stop gaining life? Yeah, probably. I can't beat like Sunfall anyways. I hate this game. I hate this game. Yeah. I mean, we did flood pretty bad where I, I think there were spots where we were in it, but we're definitely out of it now. We'll, we'll give ourselves one more draw step to like chain together questing druids, but sick. Boo, boo. Not my favorite way to end this video, but you know what? We fought hard and we had fun. This is the auto lose matchup though, y'all. This is the one I do not want to play against ever. Their whole deck is designed to beat us. And we still snuck a game out. And honestly, we were competitive, at least in this game. But now, seems like our, our battle has ended. All right. We also just drew 1 billion land. So, all right, everyone. That does it for this video. There's no real changes I would make to this deck. As, uh, you know, I really do think this deck is at a good spot right now. This is the deck I've been fine-tuning and kind of playing uh, to get ready for my kind of tournaments as it stands now every weekend everything's gonna change so uh, we'll see but if you're watching this video uh, once again I will be making daily videos coming out at 11 a.m. 
Eastern time. So mark your calendars if you want to continue to watch some standard content. And of course, subscribe to this video and you get huge bonus points for sharing. So thank you so much for watching everyone and we'll see you tomorrow.